So, hello everybody to this say, first in the world uh, Farmer Bridge webinar. We are very happy to see that there are so many of you who are interested on the program. And uh, we wish all us good luck with the webinar and uh, we'll start now. So, uh, the next slide. Uh, my name is Eva Terasalmi and I come from Finland and I have been quite a long time a active inside uh, uh, FIP, our organization. And a, since uh, 2022, I became the Farmer Bridge Program Coordinator after Diane Gale and Agathe Verli. And a, Agathe was the lady who put Farmer Bridge on uh, more than 20 years ago. And a, since that, uh, we have had a huge amount of progress, mainly done by, by uh, Dr. Agate. And I think we will all send our warm greetings to her today to, to celebrate her achievements in the in uh, uh, setting up this program from hope we are we all can benefit in a, one way or another. So we'll go now to the learning objectives, what we do have today. So we hope that they, after you have been listening this webinar and discussing about the uh, the different presentations, so you have learned about the Farmer Bridge program, our objectives, and about the previous impact of the program. And they, then you hopefully also understand how you can uh, uh, participate and what are the expected outcomes from from participating to the program. And we also hope, as this is especially uh, uh, a, a webinar for the for the hosts or or mentors, so that they after this one you you also uh, are able to to think about having the role of the host or a mentor, or also the the role of the participant in the program. So this is what we hope to achieve today, and we also welcome your your uh, questions and comments. Uh, very much and all your feedback what you would like to give us and a uh, what you you should do here in this slide there is a mistake it says that you can write to the chat your questions but questions should be written to the questions and answers box so that we can then go through them but on the chat you can you can write what what uh, are the other ideas you might have and and what kind of things you will uh, need to discuss and a, uh, we we are open to any kind of discussion also during the meeting, but also during the presentation. We will have three presentations today, but they uh, uh, and I, I think we will have also time uh, in the end of the whole uh, whole uh, program to come back to the discussions. So uh, to to start with, I will just tell you. A few words. What is Farmer Bridge? And as I already said, uh, Farmer Bridge is a was a uh, started about twenty two years ago by Dr. Agatha Werley in in Switzerland when she retired from WHO, and thought that what what could she do to to benefit the people uh, um, in the developing parts of the world? How how could she um, um, support their professional practice and development? And she set up this program, uh, which is aims at the exchanging the knowledge and and transferring the knowledge from those who know more to those who need to to learn. And today, Farmer Bridge works under the FIP Foundation, and a, the the original aim is still valid. So we aim at connecting pharmacists in developing parts of the world with pharmacists who can help them in the professional development needs. And at this point, I want to remind you that this is a program for, for already practicing pharmacists, not for students. Students have their own in the in the uh, frame of, of IPSF. And the program uh, covers all three FIP main areas, which will say the education, pharmaceutical education, pharmaceutical practice, and the research. And you can see it more like a tool which can be used to connect pharmacists in different FIP activities. And they, 
what do we do with this tool is that they we, we have organized on-site exchanges, a lot of them during the years. There have been book donations, which are still going on. We are very happy that they, we have a great supporter, ASHP, uh, who is a, uh, giving us the books to donate uh, for the participants. And there has also been some equipment donations back in time. Uh, what happened during the COVID was that they all these say on-site um, exchanges were of course cancelled, and uh, after the COVID, when I also took over this uh, job as a as a um, farmer bridge um, person, uh, we started again uh, those exchanges. But it has been quite a rocky road uh, because a um, this is a. Uh, this has a, um, been a little bit difficult to find the contacts again because uh, they were lost during the, the time, of course, because it was a long time and people were, get a new jobs, etc. So this is a, a thing where we, we need new new hosts and, and new supporters. And a, there was also another change which happened during the or after the COVID, which is that we are now much more on the uh, on the um, using the, the the net for for the collaboration and setting up the collaboration instead of just using the traditional uh, sending people from one place to another and and we recommend nowadays that that all the um, exchange even the exchanges start from a setting up a, a connection in the net and then discussing there more thoroughly the learning objectives and whether they can be reached without any any sending anybody to anywhere. Here you can see our main communication tool, which is the our homepage, www.farmabridge.org. And a, uh, here you can learn more of, of our um, program and, a, and you can also register yourself. You can see here the reg registration uh, uh, panel. And they, there you do the registration, and they are a co-moderator. Only a bit will uh, Harriet will will tell later more about this how how this say uh, works. And they uh, in that web page in the next slide, you can also see that they there are our initiatives, and there is the how we have made the different some testimonies about the. Uh, participating in the program and on the right side you can see the most important thing which is the uh, how you can support our work financially so there are the instructions about how you can support the foundation and if you want to especially support the the, the farmer bridge program you can choose that possibility as well we are totally dependent on these uh, supporters uh, uh, help to us so this is important information. On the next slide, we can see a little bit a uh, statistics about what has happened. So we have now in our mailing list more than uh, 2,000 PharmaBridge alumni in more than 40 countries. And most of the participants have come uh, uh, in the, from the developing parts of the world and they in the different WHO regions, among which India and Nigeria has been possibly the main, main uh, active active uh, places. But they uh, and and most of the hosts has been in the in the US in a big uh, colleges where also have there is also a hospital, because many of the participants are very interested in the uh, clinical pharmacy services and their development, but they. We have also seen very happy um, um, things uh, uh, changing here because they, we have had also good collaborations with the Ghana, with the Korlebu uh, Teaching Hospital, so that they have accepted people from African region to learn about their practice. And of course, these initiatives have made it much more easier to handle the visas and all the other things which a uh, which sometimes might be very complicated. So I want to thank all the, 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 the past and, and also the future hosts and participants and, and they all their, their uh, 
big interest towards the program and they and they supporting the farmer bridge and having the enthusiasm which is say the necessity uh, to to run this kind of a program successfully and they, after this a general presentation i will give now the floor to our uh, co-moderator harriet oniebide and she comes from from nigeria and is the uh, now acting also uh, together with her role in the young uh, early career pharmacist uh, group in FIP. So she's our liaison person. And her achievement was also that day she put our our LinkedIn page up here uh, recently. So please be our members in the, uh, our friends in the in the LinkedIn group and you can get all the um, the the uh, advices you you need from there. But now the floor is yours. Uh, Harriet, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Eva. And um, I'll be speaking on participating in the Farmer Bridge program. I'll be talking on participating in the Farmer Bridge program. Please, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so the Farmer Bridge program is open to pharmacists, um, pharmaceutical scientists pharmacy educators, especially those from the developing and translate, transitional countries. Now we, Pharma Bridge understand that pharmacy practice across different countries is different. So the program is brought in to bridge the gap in practice. So it's to strengthen pharmacy practice, pharmacy services, pharmacy education, and pharmaceutical services in developing and transitional countries. So the essence is when you become a participant of the Pharma Bridge program, you are expected to improve pharmacy practice in your country with the knowledge you will gain from the Pharma Bridge program. And also, this program is open for all early career pharmacists. So you are invited to register at the Pharma Bridge program. The first step to register and be a participant is through the website. Um, Eva had talked about the website and this is the link. We'll also share the link in the question box, in the chat box. And when you get on the link on the website, we have a questionnaire form for you to fill. And when you are unable to fill this form, then you can email farmerbridge at fip.org to declare your interest in participating in the Farmer Bridge program. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, some of the information we need from you is your personal details, like your name and all of that. Then your country is very important to us. Like we stated, the Pharma Bridge program is for pharmacists, especially for those in developing and transitional countries. And also your professional status. What is your level of practice at the moment? The next information we require from you is the field of pharmacy practice, where your pharmacy practice is. Okay. I'm sorry, Eva, for the loss. Um, yeah. The next information we require from you is the field of pharmacy practice. And here we really expect you to be very specific with what you want. You know, pharmacy practice is a very broad area. So where are you looking at? What is your expectation and in pharmacy practice? The more clear you are with your interest, the coordinator can link you to a host. But then this is also open to early career pharmacists. So if you are at that stage where you are testing the waters, you are not sure of what exactly you want to do yet, we also welcome you to register and then we'll discuss further with you to link you to, to a host or a mentor. And also on the form, you can declare your interest if you need books, tools, or any professional materials. 
to help you in your practice. And then we have a space for general suggestions. What will you like to tell Farmer Bridge? We welcome that. And lastly, at the end of the form, we request your consent to give you further information. Now you have is a consent request, so you can say yes or you can say no. But we expect and we encourage you to say yes, because by saying yes, you can receive subsequent information like our newsletter. Earlier this month, we sent in a farmer bridge newsletter. So when you declare, you give your consent, you can receive our subsequent information and you can receive also our newsletter. And also for more information, we welcome you to follow our LinkedIn page at FIP Farmer Bridge. So just a recap, all the registration to participate in the webinar is through the website. And when you are unable to do that, you can also email us and we'll attend to you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ande. We have a few questions here in the question and answer box. And uh, the first one is, uh, is Afghanistan a part of this connection? And uh, yes, everybody is part of this connection. So there is no country, no no person who are excluded based on the on their where they are situated in the world. But they, uh, of course, sometimes the co the connect keeping can be very difficult. But there is no uh, further uh, this kind of pre uh, pre a a um, selection. Everybody is welcome, even if you are not a member of a of a, of a FIP. Uh, we strongly recommend everybody to become a member of because then you get a huge resource uh, base for your benefit. But they, but anyway, so this is a this is working on a personal level and not having any kind of constraints of this is a this is a professional program. And a uh, the second question, which I don't see anymore, but it was there, was that is this free? And a to register yourself is is a totally. Uh, free, so it doesn't cost you more than than they having your email program, but they um, then of course if you really think about the the uh, participating as a as a uh, to an exchange or something like that, so the support you will get from from financially from Farmerbridge is not covering all your expenses. You have to have some other uh, coverage as well. So, um, but but the all these things, what PharmaBridge are, are doing, they are they are free. So to register yourself or or something like that. So I will. Uh, I hope they say clarified the the questions and they and they. There is also a question about what is the difference between PharmaBridge and FIP. So FIP is the a, a global organization for all the pharmacists and their organizations. And it works in the areas of uh, pharmacy practice in different sections. And it works in the uh, area of pharmaceutical research with the, with their uh, six the, um, interest groups. And then there is the ed, FIP ed, which is the education, pharmaceutical education. And a pharma bridge is only a program inside FIP and its foundation. And a it's you can see it more as a tool connecting people from from the developing part of the world to the more developed part of the world. So FIP is a is an organization, and uh, pharma bridge is a program in the in the um, in inside FIP. And then somebody wants to have the link. And a, it was on the on the um, for for the you can go there www.farmabridge.org. so it's there and a and the free of cost registration does exist there and a yes and and a to Titla, you, I could say that everybody is welcome to register. It doesn't matter in, in which field you are you are working. 
uh, and they, we don't provide funding for higher education. We uh, make for the people who are doing their their um, uh, exchange a uh, 500 euros uh, uh, lump sum uh, when we have got the, the the report of the of the exchange. So a um, I will now continue the presentation about this. What happens when I we got the registration? So a what happens uh, when I got the registration? It comes through the the the, the system we've described here. I normally have to contact the the person who has registered him or herself to ask several questions because they the the questionnaire the registering form is is not very specific, and if the person is not giving uh, very specific information, it's near really, really imp uh, impossible to start any kind of a connection. So so what happens is that the the person will get a a mail from me, where I do ask more more uh, information about the, the the purpose of the registration and i also need a postal address not the email address if we want to to ship the ashb compendium to the persons who have registered themselves and sometimes the whole process stops in this point so i never got the 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 postal address or I got only the postal address and the person is happy with that. It's just a book donation and then it's okay. But there might be very different needs. There is need for educational materials. There is support for professional practice in the areas. Most of those are clinical services, developing clinical services or, or AMR uh, issues. There might be a, a question or a request for an already existing partnership. This is also possible. So if a, you have a, a, already a, a person who is willing to take you to his lab or her lab for a for some weeks, so you can ask here for, for help to, to get the help in the visa issues and, 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 and other things. And you will get this uh, 500 uh, uh, euros uh, support also after you have filled in your, your report about the this uh, exchange. There are also, uh, in a way, they're uh, possible to organize this kind of a country support. As Harriet already mentioned to you, it's uh, important that they that they, you are not representing only yourself, but also, in a way, your country. And if you can... Uh, uh, if you are representing the, your country organization, so we can put it to you to 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 work with a, with another country in a more developing part of the world to to do a little bit more of this kind of a of a country uh, development support uh, hospital uh, many many people in in a, who have registered themselves to Farmer Bridge has been uh, working in a hospital settings and they are especially interested in to develop this a hospital pharmacy area. And we have made an agreement with the hospital pharmacy section about the so-called um, Basel statements that they, the the programs who want to uh, develop the the um, how to put in practice the the implementation of Basel statements are are also um, supported by the hospital pharmacy section. Uh, Sometimes uh, there are there is need to contact somebody to to somewhere, and I try to help that on on that issue as well. And then there might be a need for an equipment. But this hasn't happened so much uh, lately. It was in the beginning of the program that people really needed some laboratory equipments or things like that. But but the cost of shipping is easily more expensive than the than the cost of of a. Um, buying it there so so that might be the reason why why these things are not so much done anymore uh, and a um, so um, these are really many faceted all these uh, things what we try to do and a uh, you also have to understand that this is not any kind of a travel agency so that's not the the, the purpose really to to send a person from place A to place B to learn a, a specific thing there. Uh, if the communication can, can be organized through the uh, internet, 
that's equally beneficial and, and sometimes you can even reach more benefits on that way. So that they when when you are registered and, and I will find you a, a, a person who is interested to, to be your mentor or your tutor or your host. So the person then uh, you you will start the communication uh, uh, on this say uh, distant mode. And then you can define the goals. And if it looks beneficial for a person to really do this kind of on-site um, visit to, to some specific place to learn something specific, then it can be organized. But you always start in a in a distant mode just to make the acquaintance and, and understand that they the what are the, the, the things. This makes the life for the host also much better easier because say uh, you 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 have the possibility to really understand what kind of a help is needed and in those uh, big uh, universities uh, there are usually a, a, a professional person organizing the the exchange but uh, that that person is not the one who is going to be the the, the really the mentor that might be a, a clinician in in a specific department in the hospital, and and they, so there might be several people involved in in this process, which is also um, important to understand. And they, I also have to say that they you need a, a lot of patience because these are not very uh, uh, fast processes, as you understand. So so sometimes it takes years before the the whole thing is a is a uh, organized and and they but they we try to do our best with the resources we have and they and and they you are always free to have all the, to to present the questions whatever is in your mind and we try to answer as as soon as we can uh, and in the in in this slide i would also say that they the uh, the hosts um also need to register themselves to PharmaBridge using this same uh, link, and they. Uh, but the hosts also need much more support to understand that they what are they their roles and tasks and so on. So we always organize a, a discussion with the host candidate to learn more about the fields of expertise and what they can offer for the pharmacist uh, for the participants and they. And and they so that I also learn about what the what the host can offer and will offer, and they uh, so it's it's easier for me also to understand how to, that I'm trying to match the right people, and they as you can understand I don't know <laughs> all the people all the pharmacists in this world and I don't know their specific field of interest or their specific field of 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 a um, knowledge. So I, I I I am very much dependent on on the host uh, ability to tell that they I can host this kind of a person or I can be a tutor for this kind of a person, so that I I know exactly that okay this is about gene therapy or this is about the uh, uh, pharmacology some specific gene uh, therapies or, or whatever is the the interest area. Uh, antibiotic resistance has been a big issue, and I try to uh, connect these people also to the FIP uh, antimicrobial resistance group. Uh, so uh, I, just to say a few words about these liaisons. So we have uh, different liaison persons in different FIP sections in the different working groups, etc., because they, then we can um, easily uh, contact the, the applicant to the person who is really uh, working on this uh, specific field and, and who has all the contacts to the other people working in this field. So in this way, for example, the, the FIP antimicrobial resistance working group has been very valuable. Uh, so I have all the people who have been interested on, on AMR, I have connected them with this, this working group. Uh, so, uh, I think this was my part, and I, I will now uh, present you the, the next speaker, Rebecca Moles, who is a well-known person in, inside FIP, has been for years 
worked in a, first as the early career pharmacist group and then in a in a also in a uh, in a um, her professional career as a hospital pharmacist as a professor as a teacher and also which is uh, relevant today uh, a, a foundation co-director and and also a host for many pharma bridge students so the floor is yours rebecca thank you so much ava and uh it's so great to see so many people online. Uh, for me, it's quite late at night, 11.30 p.m., so I hope to stay awake and um, answer your questions. But, uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be here tonight and to talk from a host's perspective. Um, and I haven't been a host for that long. In fact, if I can change my slides, I hosted two uh, Farmer Bridge candidates in 2018 and two more in 2019. And we all know what happened in 2020 and 2021 uh, and why I haven't hosted any uh, in those years. And as Ava said, we're just sort of kicking back into the swing of things. But um, it's been great to be a host from the University of Sydney. And I know that there was a question actually in the... Um, Q&A section about whether an academic or a researcher can be a candidate and the answer is absolutely yes and in fact they're the types of people so early career academics or you don't even have to be totally early career but um, academics that want to learn about how things work on, the, on a in another part of the world um, they're the sorts of people that the University of Sydney would host. Um, I think also something to touch on that Ava said in, in this new world where we have become a lot more virtual and we've been able to, you know, connect like we are tonight online. I think, um, you know, thinking back to my to our candidates in 2018, 2019, it might have actually been really nice for me to have had connections with them, uh, you know, a lot more virtual connections and meetings on Zoom or, or any of the platforms um, to sort of learn what they wanted to learn about from the University of Sydney. So instead, what we did was put together a program we thought that they might like to hear about. Um, and, and so they, you know, I think the first candidates came for three weeks, and the second set of candidates came for two weeks. So we, we've been putting together a two or a three week program. I think the other thing um, that Ava has already touched on as well is that the visas and paperwork is the hardest part of this. Um, and so if we do have a virtual connection first, I think making sure you really want to come and that you're really going to get out of that experience what you're expecting, um, it'd be really good to start that virtual um, meetings first before you delve into the visas paperwork because it really does take perhaps six, maybe even up to 12 months to organise the trip. Um, again, I have somebody who works in the admin office that has helped with um, candidates' paperwork. So the University of Sydney, of course, have forms for visiting scholars, visiting academics. I have to write the program and tell the university why these people are coming. All of that can help with getting your visas, um, you know, through, uh, but we can't control that stuff. I, I don't know anything about how to get a visa. That is something that somebody else in some other office knows about. So it's about being organised um, and making sure you really want to come. Um, the other thing that has uh, or could occur is that when it's a great time perhaps for a candidate to leave their country and to come to the other side of the world, and let's just say that was Australia, um, that we have different semesters, uh, different times where there's university breaks, et cetera. So it's also um, important to see if we can line up, if you want to see classroom activities, for example, and how we teach certain, you know, topics in Australia, um, 
you know, that you line up so it's semester time, so it's not a mid-semester break, it's not between semesters. If you want to come really just to learn about research and meet a lot of researchers, then maybe it doesn't matter if the students are there. So on my next slide, I'll just show you a couple of examples of what we have done in the program in 2018, 2019. So our candidates certainly did a lot of observation and participation in learning sessions. So I organised that they went to a variety of different lectures across the different years of the pharmacy degrees. Uh, similarly, they went to different tutorials. Um, you can see here a tutorial where students are learning to take blood pressure, um, where there's subcutaneous injections of insulin being given. Um, they also went to laboratory classes. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly which lab uh, I've got pictures of, but I know there's a tableting lab there as well and a dispensing lab. Um, and they also got to participate in some of our objective structured clinical exams um, and see how that how we also assess our students. So that was sort of the learning and teaching side of, of things. They certainly had a lot of meetings with faculty um, and went to research seminars. Um, so um, in particular, I was able to put together a program where where the candidates were able to meet with researchers that perhaps had a similar research interest. So uh, many of these people wanted to meet more practice-based researchers, pharmacy practice, social pharmacy researchers, and so I was able to do that. But also um, they hooked up with some of our more scientific-based pharmaceutical chemistry researchers, et cetera. They went to our um, weekly seminar program, which uh, we have a, a research seminar every week. And I also organised some site visits to community pharmacies and to hospital pharmacies. And whilst, okay, that's not necessarily um, academia, of course, we send our students out to these places on placement, but also we teach and research in these fields and so we I believe that that was beneficial to understand what practice was like in Australia. Um, this is just a quote from one of uh, one of the candidates that uh, thanked me a lot and they um, loved going to the hospital and, and clinical pharmacy and um, seeing the training at Sydney University. But I think my favourite bit, to be honest, of this quote is that after coming back home, they were able to collaborate with a medical college for a project in asthma management. So after having discussions and meetings with some of our asthma researchers, they're actually, and to see what our practice was like in Australia, they're able to go straight back home and sort of set up some research collaborations. So that was, um, I think, lovely. And, you know, there are other newsletters where um, I've had candidates now tell me that they, they now put the same training into practice in their classrooms with their students. So, um, you know, that's quite heartening, I think, from a host's perspective that they did get something out of that um, visit. Um, so... I that is that for me. I might pass back over to Ava about uh, finishing up the rest of this um, webinar, and I think we've got a lot of time for questions and answers as well. Thank you, Beck, so much. Uh, it has been a pleasure to have you here today with us, as as always. And uh, I can see that there are some uh, uh, questions. And answers box some some may uh, questions where Harriet is writing writing uh, so there are no open questions just in the moment and let's see what happens in the chat. Uh, there is a Harriet also has put put here the the link for the registration. So a. Um, I could also uh, give you a, a, this kind of a testimony from from Nigeria in this state, and uh, this is about the girl who went to or a pharmacist who went to uh, practice expressure in Canada, and uh, she writes in this way: 
My practice changed for the best after the exposure in Canada. A lot of my patients and other healthcare workers are still benefiting from the experience up till date. They always want my input when it comes to pharmacotherapy. Until this morning, I still got a thumbs up from a pharmaco- uh, from a, a doctor, doctor, a nurse, and a caregiver as per my contribution to a patient's pharmacotherapy management during the ward rounds yesterday. The intern pharmacists that are posted to my unit usually tell me that they have never seen such rapport between the doctors and the pharmacists when they accompany me on ward rounds. And a, what also happened to, to this say, person was that they she passed the U.S. Board of Pharmacy Specialities examination in geriatric pharmacy. So a and this gives me the the possibly the the last announcement of of this say uh, or or a or a fact on on this webinar, and this is that they we also can support people's uh, continuing education, so that they if they uh, I I had one person who wanted to uh, a very specific area of gene therapy and 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 they how to use that in the um in 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 pharmacy uh, programs and i i simply couldn't find any any host or anything else like that but we offered a course in a in in us which can be done in the distant mode and a so on on that way you can also this cover could be uh, this cost could be covered from from this uh, special education so this uh, this is also a possibility so um, I think the Farmer Rich is a very flexible program, where the, the it's it's question about also the imagination what you can do, uh, so that you can you can uh, uh, get your professional practice uh, to to be more advanced, with the help of the people who are there, who are your colleagues, in the world in the world of FIP who unites us. And they, on that way, I, I think it's a very important that that they, we also, uh, we don't need to come to the annual congress, uh, or we don't need to meet in a in a in this uh, real world, but we can meet in the in the virtual world and learn from each other. And Pharma Bridge is there to help you to connect the people to be the matchmaker in this pharmaceutical uh, Tinder, if we can call it on that way. So a feel uh, very uh, free to to uh, uh, give your suggestions and and also proposals and in which way we can support you and we try to to organize that and also be very uh, how could I, I I would like to encourage everybody also to become a host. We we also have some very important knowledge what we can share. So don't be shy. Don't just they go on with your sharing your knowledge, taking the responsibility and and the happiness of of a uh, being able to support the people in in a uh, who need your help. So I really encourage everybody to become a a, a host and a, and a tutor or a mentor. There is a lot you can offer to, and and a it's not too much time taking, but it's giving you also to you a lot of of a. Uh, enlightenment could i say so in your life so let's see we have one question here in q and a but they harriet is answering the this as well and we have some comments in the um uh, in a uh, uh, chat which i think we have a also covered so that's it so about this announcement, um, the recording of this webinar will be will be made available in our uh, FIP web page on the events page, and you can reach it a, uh, after we have finished this webinar. You can find it there, so you can also give recommendations to your friends or who want to uh, know more about this program to find it there, and a. What I already mentioned in the beginning is that we also need feedback so that we can develop our webinars. 
and uh, you can give it on uh, the webinars at fip.org page. So thank you for that. And uh, this is also live streamed in FIP YouTube channel and uh, it can uh, be found there. And as somebody already asked, you can become a member, individual member of FIP at uh, this page, www.fip.org and then the membership registration. And uh, here I want to say to you that FIP has say, uh, organizational members like the uh, Australian Pharmacist Association, <laughs> but we have also individual members. And these individual members are the um, people who, who want to work in the, inside the sections on their specific uh, field of interest or in the six or in the pharmacy, uh, the field of education. And there you can uh, uh, work together with your colleagues in the same area, what you are interested in. So I recommend this individual membership. It's not the same when it comes through the organization because then it, it's, it's already sieved in a way. And a, um, if you want to become a member of the early career pharmacist group, so you can do that in the uh, www.fip.org file 5786. So <laughs> you can find there. And uh, um, last but not least, I will also um, tell you in the next slide that they uh, there will be the uh, 28th FIP World Congress of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences in Cape Town in Af South Africa. And a, um, I don't know why this slide is not changing. Uh, and a, thank you. And a, it's from the 1st to, to the 4th September. Uh, and the main topic of the Congress is innovating for the future of healthcare. So if you uh, but, uh, have any chance to, to attend, you are very warmly welcome even to this. And I think our foundation and a Pharma Bridge especially will also have our own program during the Congress. So please participate in that. And a, we will have a final look at the questions and, and a answers box. FIP can consider it's free of cost registration for the, uh, for the Congress. I, I think it's a... Um, I don't know what is really the free of cost registration. The registration to Pharma Bridge is free, but the registration for Congress is say is is on on everybody's own cost. And a, how can I know that my register is correct after I send it? I as I already said, I will be in contact with everybody who has registered themselves. So if you don't hear anything about me, you you have to uh, possibly try again. There is no other way to to find out how how you are, uh, but but I I don't know if the registrations normally don't don't work. And a, there is can anyone share experiences in terms of challenges and getting by in from the supervisor to participate in Pharma Bridge. Uh, Can I answer that one, Ava, yes. maybe just as a as an idea? So this is in academia. So I think it's about, um, you know, so obviously you've got to choose a time where perhaps you are not teaching because if they need you on the floor, you probably need to come in a semester perhaps or a time where you have a little bit of time off. But I think it's also about telling your supervisor what you're going to get out of it and how you're going to bring back perhaps some innovation back home. Um, so if there's something that I guess in the teaching that you want to develop and everyone wants to try something new and, uh, yeah, I think it's about selling that perhaps might be a good way to answer that. I don't know. Thank you, Beck. So um, I think we've managed throughout the questions and, and the answers box. Uh, and uh, so I just uh, want to thank you for attending today and being together with the, uh, with us. And uh, I look forward to meet you inside Farmbridge uh, in near future. 
and I wish you a very good continuing of this week and in your professional work and life. And I thank you for attending today. And thank you for the speakers and thank you for FIP for supporting, uh, organizing this webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.